Okay, guys, so really interesting topic right here, and I'm glad I've got MC here uh, on the channel to talk about this today. So, guys, we're hearing all this kind of chatter recently about the metaverse. Uh, you know, Facebook changed their name recently to Meta. Um, Tim Cook went on record recently as the, the obviously the CEO of Apple, uh, and he's the latest big name in tech to really ice out the industry excitement over the concept of the metaverse, for example. Uh, it's really ubiquitous and it's hypothetical nature. It's kind of what's driving a lot of, you know, kind of tech gurus a little bit insane. Some of them are really buying in, some are not. You know, Tim Cook seems to get, like he's got some trepidations. His quote is, I always think it's important that people understand what something is. And I'm not really sure the average person can tell you what the metaverse is. Uh, my question for you is, what the heck is the metaverse? Yeah, it's essentially a, this di new digital world that you can access through these goggles, which <laughs> uh, I believe they're called Oculus or something it's quite you know um, my brother-in-law actually has a pair that i tried out uh a couple of months ago it's quite freaky because you're literally in a different world yeah. um which is all virtual uh all digital um and people are starting to actually interact in this world uh -huh. uh, so you create this avatar which is then in this digital <laughs> virtual world which you access through these goggles um, and then essentially this, this avatar can then do things, can purchase property, believe it or not, in the metaverse, which the first time I, I essentially heard about this, it just blew my mind. Um, the things that you would own too is the NFTs, this non-functional tokens, which that's kind of how it plays into this. And then obviously how you transact in the metaverse is through digital currencies. Uh, specific crypto projects are very big on it. So you can transact in the metaverse using these uh, digital currencies. Um, it's in its infancy, really. If you think about, you know, cryptocurrencies essentially uh, was, essentially was born out of the last financial crisis, right? I think around 2009, 2010, the first white paper of Bitcoin came about. And then later as, um, this essentially, this ecosystem uh, was built out. We we saw NFTs make its make its appearance, um, and now um, essentially the metaverse is this digital virtual world. So first, it's just interesting how if you think about if you want to get philosophical about it, uh, which I tend to do. If you think about societies and how they shape and form, the first thing that we all do as as humans the strange creatures that we are is we figure out a way to barter or transact with one another a medium of exchange and that was the cryptocurrencies and then obviously things then flow from that we create and build more things that could be traded for the medium of exchange um, and then eventually we built out this world that we live in uh, with essentially the medium of exchange which is quote unquote money um, at the center of all of it. So it's quite interesting to see that it's kind of developed. On, it's gone through the same stages. So my take essentially is, on it is from a technology standpoint, I'm always excited about technologies uh, and emerging technologies and the development of technologies. Look at all the things that we're doing right now. You and I are having a conversation, you know, through the internet, you know, on, on, a, uh, on, on a platform, which uh, was technology that we saw as, as kids, you know, uh, when you looked at Star Trek, right? And people were having conversations on the, uh, on the tele screens with each other. Um, it's the same technologies available. So from a technology standpoint, pretty exciting to see the development of it because it could be used for good in the global economy. And on the negative side of it, obviously it could lead us to a very dark place where folks get um, addicted to this. Uh, they're stuck in a digital world with just digital things um, that could be very easily taken away from them. Um, it's essentially kind of a, a web, a net, if you will, that you could be, be lured into. Now, I have a friend, uh, and he's one of my mentors called Francis Hunt, the market sniper, the crypto sniper, uh, and the reset sniper. And he came up with this theme called the anti-metaverse. And essentially what this theme plays into essentially is um, there's different ways for investors to position themselves in different environments, right? So will there be a time and a place for the metaverse? Yes, there will. But right now is not it. 
So right now, essentially, as an investor, how do you position yourself to be on the right side of this incredible wealth transfer? How do you position yourself, your family, your and your business and your investments to capitalize on the opportunities in the environment that we are in right now? Well, you have to do the complete opposite of essentially the metaverse. You have to get physical. And by physical, we mean, you know, taking care of yourself physically, get in the best shape uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Um, grow and strengthen your bonds within your family. Grow and strengthen the bonds in your community. Find like-minded people. Find folks uh, that are on the same path as you, trying to build and create incredible things and build and protect wealth during these times. Um, in your business, look at uh, look at uh, some of the ways that you could protect your business too, from a from a from a physical standpoint, and just don't have it be one hundred percent digital. Uh, and then from an investment standpoint, look at the physical things. Position yourself in physical things, land real estate and specifically um everybody knows that i'm extremely bullish especially on the short-term rentals on the luxury side of the of the market it's physical right the same as mm -hmm. the same as land um then from a um a, another standpoint gold and silver is there it's wealth insurance should you should have some in in your portfolio um and then of course you know, on, on other physical stuff, invest in other assets, which is also physical. There's many different niches. I wrote a book, the 21 uh, best cash flow niches, which we talk about tons of physical things that you can invest in, things that you could touch, things that you could feel, things that other people want, and they would transact and pay you uh, money for it. Um, and those assets will help you generate cash flow. And then look at um, opportunities in physical things where there are distortions in markets. One of the greatest opportunities that I've seen in a long time for investors, and some of them have already capitalized on this opportunity, is positioning themselves properly, for example, in energy markets, you know, oil, gas, coal, uh, and uranium, physical things. Um, because there's still a huge demand for energy globally. Um, there will continue to be. Um, and at this stage, the new greener technologies don't have an infrastructure built out. So you can't just switch all of the, the, those four off uh, and switch it over to essentially um, solar and, and, and wind and hydroelectric kind of uh, sources and other renewable sources of, of energy. That will come, but there's a process to build out that infrastructure. So in the meantime, folks can capitalize on that. So that's kind uh, of what I, what I mean by the anti-metaverse uh, theme is, uh, yeah, is, is, is my friend Francis Hunt that, sh that shared that with me. And I think it's a great, it's, it's some, it just really sums up the strategy that investors can use today to not only to protect, but to build wealth during these times. Yeah, and something and tangible things, uh, you know, I really uh, wholeheartedly agree with that. You, you mentioned a, a handful of investment classes that I'm actively involved in. Probably the top one that's at the top of mind for me right now is the STR, the luxury STR space. We've talked about it. We'll drop a video links to that. Um, investors are really, really tremendously excited about that investment class. I know you are as well with a lot of your folks. So you talk often here and we bring you on the channel because you are an expert in whole life and the infinite banking concept. We'll drop links to the previous videos below, guys. Make sure you check those out. If you are interested, again, email ninja at vipfinancialeducation.com. Who's your first, your last name, and the best number to reach you. It's a great hedge against what's going on right now. Can you dive into that as an investment vehicle and why people should at least take a look at whole life and how to utilize that IBC, particularly right now, why it's so relevant to hedge? When uh, essentially there's a downturn and a huge pullback in the economy and in markets, um, and we get a hard landing. You want access to liquidity. You want access to cash. I cannot stress this enough to folks um, that, and, and right now at the time of recording is one of the best times to build positions in cash. Um, so that's the first thing is 
if you're just starting out, try to try to get as much cash together right now. Do not chase anything. Let the game come to you. The game's going to come to you. So build as much cash as you possibly can right now. That's number one. Number two, be very, very careful where that cash is positioned in. You know, um, I mentioned the importance of physical things and sort of um, uh, mentioned this, this strategy of, of this idea of going anti-metaverse for a while. Along with that, having physical things, the second part is having cash and then uh, being very, very cognizant where that cash is positioned in. Because essentially where your cash will position, uh, that, that vehicle is only as good as the promise that stands behind it. So I look at mutual insurance companies that have been around since the mid 1800s that have made good on their promises for since the mid 1800s. Um, you know, and I always say, if you want to see how people will behave in the future or institutions or um, other parties to a contract, you look at past behavior. And these mutual insurance companies have withstand the storms. Just think about some of these, these mutual insurance companies um, was around during the Civil War. And in the United States, most people don't know it. There was a greenback and a grayback. There was essentially two currencies going around during that time. Uh, they were around at the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank in 1913. They were around during the First World War, the Second World War, the establishment of the Bretton Woods system in 1944 they were around when richard nixon closed the gold window in 1971 they were around when the petrodollar was reestablished uh through contracts uh, that the united states had with saudi arabia in 1974 they've been around since the 70s the 80s the 90s that was kind of crazy and they're still around now so when i look at a party that's going to make good on promises these folks are pretty solid so that is a vehicle um where i position cash in and where we see very wealthy individuals and fam families uh, which operate through family offices still position their cash in because they know that the, 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 the promise that these institutions and these companies make is pretty, pretty strong. Be very careful of having uh, a lot of cash in banks. Um, and if we just look at what the Vatican was doing, you know, they essentially pulled their liquid funds out of the, fu the financial system and out of other banks and put it in their own bank. You can do the same thing through infinite banking with this strategy and create your own banking system. So, you know, do not just listen uh, what folks and other uh, people are telling you. Look at what they're doing and then see how you can implement and execute similar strategies that what they're, uh, they're, they're doing in their own uh, personal business and investment economy. Mutual insurance companies are not inside of the Wall Street casino. They are not listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So they're completely outside of the, uh, the stock market. So they're also not tied to equities. The whole life policies that we structured a dividend paying whole life insurance policy with a mutual insurance company designed very specifically for high cash value right away. Is when, when stock markets crash and equities draw down, um, these, the values of these uh, accounts, the, the balances do not go down. So they stay the same. So, and you'll have access to, um, to liquidity through policy loans when you need it most. For folks that were around in 2008, 2009, and 2010, they know when liquidity dries up, it dries up and you cannot get money uh, in, in, in any place almost, right? Banks are not going to lend you money. Uh, HELOCs can get pulled, uh, which a lot of folks saw that in 2008 and, and 2009. And by the way, my, uh, private money and hard money lenders, uh, when they see the deals that become available and crashes, they buy it themselves. They're not going to just lend you the money to, to go and buy that. That's definitely was, was, was my experience during 2008 and 2009. And I could see it hap happening again. So how do you position yourself? You get into the best cash position that you can. Um, you know, we always hear people say you buy when there's blood in the streets. Uh, well, you know, when there's blood in the streets, liquidity dries up uh, and it's very, very hard to get to. So you want to have your capital in a place that you can get to it to capitalize on all of these opportunities because they can be life changing for folks.
hundred percent. You've talked often here on the channel, your, your mantra with the protection uh, position and, and being able to pivot. So I love those. If you want to elaborate on those and how, how should investors, what should investors be thinking about right now in context with that protection position and pivot mantra? Yeah, I, that comes from my sports background. You know, everybody is very focused on playing offense, you know, and trying to run up the score. But that doesn't really help you if you're not playing any defense. It's during times like this when defense becomes really, really important because essentially all of us are going to start, you know, in, in a crisis, we all start playing red zone defense. So you got to play really good red zone defense, and then you're going to be able to pivot once once you play a really good defense to position yourself to then go on the offense and capitalize on all these opportunities. So make sure that your defensive structures as an investor is in place, uh, because if you don't have those in place, you're not going to be in the position to pivot and then position yourself to capitalize on opportunities. Uh, you could get wiped out if you don't have those defensive structures in place. So focus on defense, great defense right now. As I use that, <laughs> use that example of playing good and great red zone defense, only when you play really good red zone defense and you turn the ball over, then you can pivot in position and go on the offense and capitalize on, on opportunities. So it's very import important to have that mindset. Protection is going to be key for investors first. And once you protect yourself from the dangers, because not, not all of us have a crystal ball, right? Uh, so we don't know where it's going to come from. We have ideas um, and we have um, a, a, a thesis of how this can play out. But um, yeah, I mean, you cannot, uh, you'll have blind spots. All of us do. All of the really, really uh, great investors, what they're talking about right now is their blind spots and they're talking to as many people as possible to figure out where are they not positioned properly, right? Where have they missed something? Um, so we need to learn from them and do the same thing. Play great defense, figure out where your gaps are in, in your defense. And, and during this time, when you still have time, strengthen it and, and fix it so that you're ready to pivot and position yourself and capitalize on opportunities playing great offense. Yeah, I love that. We always talk here on the channel about just that preparation. You know what? Just being prepared, even if, you know, you're prepared all for not, at least you're positioned that way for, you know, if something were to come along or when it does the next time. So there's nothing wrong with being overprepared in those instances. And I love when you kind of break it down like that. So um, we're both real estate uh, guys. So I would be remiss if I had you on the channel here today, did not talk to you about a little bit of real estate. Um, I'm hearing a big buzz out there right now. I wanted to get your take on it. Uh, hearing a lot of about 1031 exchanges. A lot of investors are um, converting a lot of their long-term rentals into short-term rentals, utilizing the tax advantages of the 1031 exchange. What do you think about kind of the buzz with that and, and how much of that is going on in the market? Are you seeing the same? And what are your thoughts on the, the redeployment of that into the different investment class for the, for the STRs? Yeah, we, I actually do see a lot of that going on. There is quite a buzz of, uh, uh, around it. Um, I think it's a great strategy from a, from a tax perspective um, to uh, essentially roll over and defer uh, capital gains. And you can continue to defer this through a 1031 exchange, obviously. But to do that, and also while simultaneously position yourself in another asset class, uh, which, you know, depending on where you are, and that's why I love the short-term uh, rentals, especially on the luxury. And I think there's still going to be a huge demand for it. Um, and other investors are starting to pick up on that. Um, you know, in, in every economy, there's opportunities. This is one of those opportunities that will continue to be there. So uh, if you can leverage the tax code and reposition some capital, uh, roll it over and position yourself in an asset clause uh, that, um, that is, is, is doing really well right now, I think it's a great strategy. And I appreciate that. And we love having you here on the channel. I appreciate you taking time out. Love to have, have you back on here shortly to kind of get your take on this crazy uh, global financial world as we know it right now. So um, 
Guys, if you're interested, you want to talk to MC and his team, again, we're going to go ahead and drop that link below. Email ninja at VIP Financial Education. We'll include your first, your last name, the best number to reach you at, and VIP conversation in the subject line. As always, go out there and do your homework, do your own due diligence. Guys, now is the time to really surround yourself with people that are in the know, uh, that have really navigated this path before so they can make sure that you're, or at least helping you to avoid the pitfalls that can often come in, you know, kind of uh, uncharted waters like this. So whether it's MC and, and, and his team or someone else that would be an expert in these fields, make sure that you chat with them, get the best information you can. Uh, but don't be afraid to take action, guys, because the action takers are the ones that are going to come out on top uh, in this uh, endeavor right now over the next couple of years. So uh, go ahead and drop that thumbs up below. That helps out our algorithms. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and ding that bell. As always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode.